Hello and welcome to What's in the Box. My name is Sophie Clark and I'm here at Wessex Archaeology's head office where I will be speaking to our in-house experts about the objects they find most intriguing. Today I'm joined by our principal osteoarchaeologist, Jackie McKinley. Hello Jackie. Hello. Hi, what Hello. have you got for us today? Well, I've been a bit greedy actually, Sophie. Okay. <laughs> and I've brought two things for us to look at. Now I have to, wear, I have to say it's nothing to do with human bone. I'm wearing my archaeologist's hat today. No, that's fantastic. So these are both items that I found on very, very different archaeological sites. Okay. One in the south of England and one way up in the Northern Isles in Orkney. Now I'm going to start with what's in this box here. <clears throat> right. Okay. Now this is what most people think of as an artifact. Wow, that is beautiful. Isn't it just, do you know, I love this to pieces. I absolutely love this to pieces. You know when they say, what did the Romans ever do for us? Yes. Well, they made very nice little drinking cups yes, for a start did, off. <laughs> and this is a beaker. It's called a beaker and it's a little drinking cup. It would have been a wine cup. And we've actually measured this and it holds exactly 100 millilitres wow, of really? liquid. So whether there's chicken and egg in terms of, you know, millilitres and cups and cups of millilitres in the Roman period, it does make you wonder. But this would be what people would have drunk their wine out of. The amount it holds is kind of the equivalent to a small glass of wine that we'd get in a, in a pub or something here or in a restaurant. Uh, but there's so many things I love about this. It's quite a fine vessel. If you look at it, it's very fine. It's delicately made. It's gorgeous. It's the right kind of size to just, just sit in your hand like this. Yes, definitely. And what I love about it is, you know, you could just imagine people sitting around with their mates, having a few drinks, you know, sort of having a little sip. They, it's got a very small base on it. So, you know, you'd be balancing it. You wouldn't want to, but it doesn't move too much if you knock it. Yes. But you haven't got that silly thing with the stem. It would just sit there. So if you were getting a little bit tipsy towards the end of the night, you're not going to slop too much yes. of it around <laughs> the place, I hope. So the fineness of it is beautiful. The, the scenario you can envisage that's so human. This, it's just like we would do now, you Definitely. know, and you can just see friends sitting around doing it. But the other thing that I love about this is how complete it is. Now, this was one of these remarkable finds. It was, it, it, it's, it was so odd the way we found this. Now, it comes from a site near Staines, which is to the west of London. Okay. In the Roman period, Staines was known as Pontibus, which okay. means bridges. And that is because it was at the point, the bridging point across the Thames, going west out of London. Oh, okay. So yep. that's why it was called Pontibus. It was the gateway to the west from London. So this, this came out while I, was, while I was working on the site near Staines. Now what we do when we start on an excavation is we usually machine strip. So you machine strip, you get rid of all the overburden, all the material that would have built up over years. It's just made either made up ground or topsoil or, yeah. or, and you get down onto the undisturbed archaeological levels now on this particular site there was quite a depth of overburden a lot of it was made up ground right so because because it's quite near the river and the river if you go to Staines now the river's quite contained yeah whereas obviously in the past it wouldn't have been contained in quite that way it would have been much wider um, because we're in an area where there's lots of, of, of gravel islands and Staines itself would have been a gravel, with was slightly higher ground on a gravel island. And there were, we know that there were gravel islands in the Thames. And we think the reason it's called Pontibus, two bridges, you know, bridges rather than bridge, yeah. is because maybe it had to go from, from one side of the river to the other via some of these little islands to okay. make it bridgeable. Okay. Yeah. 
So I was excavating here and we were clearing the site and we got quite a, a depth of made up ground to, to sort of level it up, to bring it up, because there was a lot of flooding in parts of, parts of stains um, in the past. And so we had a depth maybe of nearly a metre of made up ground. So that's ground that's been levelled up, basically, right. to make the ground level. And as this big machine went forward and dragged back, and it's about you know, a metre and a half wide is a bucket, dragged it back, halfway down in this level, this made up ground, this plopped out of the section. It just came out. It just dropped piece. out as a whole piece of the section. Wow. So that has survived not only use in the Roman period, and this is probably about second century Roman, it's then been shuffled around, moved, dumped somewhere. That dumped material has then been dumped again and it survived complete. Wow. You know, I mean, it's just amazing how that happens sometimes. You would expect it to be in bits, but it isn't. That's it, absolutely amazing. So the, um, do you know much about the manufacturing process? Would that have helped? Uh, survival well it might have helped because it was a small vessel because sometimes small things can preserve better than yeah better than others because there's less to get bashed yes. about and it's just fortuitous to a certain extent that has survived now this was this is basically a probably a british copy of a continental version of a drinking cup Okay. that was made in the second century. And we know that, as I say, Staines was a Roman town known as Pontibus, and it probably did come from somewhere in the area. But it's, it's basically unstratified. We cannot tie it down to a specific feature, an in situ archaeological feature, which allows us to, that's how we date a lot of these features, is the materials we get out of them gives yeah. the date but they've got to be sealed deposits this unfortunately wasn't in a sealed deposit it was redeposited but i don't think it's traveled very far no because for it to survive in that fan, fan i mean i could almost sit and drink out of that well i'm not sure i would actually but i could almost <laughs> sit and drink yes, out of I, that I now it is it is such a perfect little item that has survived in that kind of fashion so uh, significance wise, are these vessels that can be found commonly or is this particularly rare? Um, I'm assuming the, the, uh, the, the preservation of it is quite uh, significant because I'm guessing many would have been broken yeah, yeah. before now. Yeah, one of the common places to find things like this is actually in graves. Okay. Because when, when the Romans buried their dead, they, they put... They, Put all sorts of stuff in there to sort of help them go on to the next bit of the afterlife and putting in little beakers drinking vessels or other kinds of um of of, of platters or or dishes that you might eat out of was quite a common thing to do but to find something that complete in the kind of settlement or in a in a domestic setting is fairly unusual so it's the completeness of it that gets me but unfortunately as I said in this case this was actually unstratified yeah it's it's a fine wear vessel so it's not like your everyday you know it wouldn't have been for, for, for everyday use but it's it, it's also sort of s suggests that you've got something of status there somebody of status who could one afford the wine could afford to have these nice fine and it is I mean if you hold it just feel how light that is it's lovely and it is, it is, it is lovely. so fine in the way it's been made it's beautiful so there's a there's an idea of status here the idea that there must have been a building of status sufficient in, in, in close proximity sufficient to to have that kind of item um, in use within it so that is the kind of significance you get from it unfortunately we have lost some of the significance because it's not in context yeah that would have been yes. that would have been ideal so the site itself, did you, if I just give that back to you, right, thank you. Break it. Uh, the site itself, was there anything similar? I know it wasn't in a context, so technically you can't kind of directly relate it. Mm. Um, but was there anything excavated that was also Roman? Yes, we did, we did have Roman material from there. And there was indications that there had been a Roman building 
um, sort of in a different part of the site to where this came up. Mostly the site we had, that, but most of what we got was medieval actually, but there was a Roman basis to it because it is a Roman okay. town. So that we know there was a, a Roman building, probably of some status because it had a tessellated floor, those little ceramic, not mosaic, per se, because mosaic tends to be much finer pieces, but it's like a mosaic floor made of broken pieces of um, things like brick and tile. So you had this tessellated, tessellated floor that had been there. But the thing is, when those kinds of buildings get abandoned, they tend to clear everything out. Yes, so you do, yes. it's only if you've had something dramatic happen, like a fire, or something, something that's caused a catastrophic abandonment of somewhere that people. I mean, when you, if you move house, you don't leave all your stuff in it, do you? No, <laughs> no. And the same thing would happen in the Roman period if they if they abandoned a building and moved on for some reason, they would take a lot of that material with them. Yeah. So this might be a leftover from that kind of a building. Yes. But we didn't find anything in situ there of that type. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah. fascinating. So that, as I say, is what people would understand mostly as an artefact. Yes. It's been manufactured. You can see it has. And it's been manufactured very beautifully. The other item I've got is a completely different kettle of fish. Oh, okay. Or a glass of wine, as the case may be. Yes. <laughs> and that is this item here. Oh, right. OK. Which That's definitely very different. <laughs> it is very different. <laughs> it is basically a beach pebble. OK. Now, this comes from Orkney. It comes from uh, mainland Orkney. It's a small, a small island off the, the north. Well, it's a tidal island. It's not completely isolated. Tidal, tidal island called Berse off the uh, northwest coast of mainland Orkney. And it's basically a sandstone. Um, uh, Orkney is, is, is famous for its old red sandstone. If you've ever been to the beautiful Kirkwall Cathedral, I haven't. I'd which love to. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's old red sandstone, which is very red. This is from obviously a slightly darker part of the, the same kind of uh, geological um, background. Yep. Um, and this is this is what we call the, the strom, probably the Stromness flagstones. Um, okay. Which is why it's the colour it is, and you can see it's a very fine grain stone. You can also see that it's it's very worn. It, that, yeah, has it been polished by people or no, is this that's natural? the sea. That's oh, right. the way things have happened. This is what I mean about it being a beach pebble. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. It's a beach pebble. But you will notice it's not quite as rounded at the ends. No, no. And you can see here it's been modified. And at this end, it's also been modified. Basically, yeah. That's been used as a hammer, bashing on things, hammering things in to the oh, ground wow. or whatever. Okay. And you can see it's not smooth. Sometimes these stones can be used to smooth things, you know, like yeah. a hone stone or something, and that isn't smooth in that way. It has got like pock marks, pick marks in it, so you yes. can see it was used from both ends. But look how beautifully that sits in my hand. Somebody has walked along the beach, you know, I mean, why, why manufacture something when nature's done it for you? Yes. This, this tidal island, you're surrounded by the sea all the time. So you go down on the beach, think, right, I need a hammer. You pick various ones up, no, no. Oh, now look, that fits perfectly. That works so well. We'll use this one, guys. And then you've got your hammer. So nature has provided you without any real work on your part other than strolling around the beach and finding something the right size with a very, very useful tool which somebody used for quite a long time. And somebody with, I think, the same size hand as mine. Now, I've got quite big hands for a woman. Um, so I suspect this was actually a chap. It was a, it was a man who was probably using this rather than the woman um, because it fits so beautifully. And that's why yeah. I love it so much. You yeah, know. no, it's absolutely gorgeous. Because if I was walking along and I found that, I might not... Um, at the time, I might not <coughs> identify it as an object that's been used for mm. thousands of years, um, but because I wouldn't necessarily recognise that the edges were mm. worked. Yeah. Um, but now that you've pointed it out and that there's no more damage around that around the sides of it either, it becomes quite apparent that this actually is a an artifact rather than 
um, just a beach pebble yeah. that you'd found. Yeah. And also, obviously, we did find it on a site. Okay. Yeah. Um, because we were doing some excavations on the Bursay Island itself. Now, Bursay, the, the name means um, Fort Island. Yeah. And it was predominantly occupied in the Norse period. But this probably relates to the Pictish levels on the island. Now, the Pictish, it's, it's a broad term that's used for uh, most of the Iron Age in, in certainly that part of Scotland, in large parts of Scotland. Okay. Um, whereas we would say we've got the sort of uh, Iron Age, Roman period, Saxons or early medieval. Yeah. Basically, the Iron Age, with the, with the Pictish sort of background to it, continued until the Norse arrived in okay. Orkney and Shetland. So we're talking yeah. about an elongated period. But this does have similarities with that in as much as it again came from um, an unstratified deposit. We didn't find right. it, which is, which is why I'm still hanging on to it now. It didn't come from a stratified deposit. Again, it came from, not in this case made up ground, but basically worked soils that were over the top that couldn't be tied down to any specific date. I see. Okay. So we couldn't tie it in precisely, but we did find other items like this because they did use stone quite a lot like this in Orkney because the stone itself lent itself to that kind of use. I mean, I've done this when I've been on site working up there because I've worked in the Northern Isles a lot during the course of my career. And if you're trying to hammer a nail in to, to sort of sort out where your, 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 your section line goes or something, you get a, you get a rock and you, you use it as a yeah, hammer. Yeah. And that essentially is what somebody has done with this. And at some point, like you do with hammers, and I do repeatedly with my trowel, they'll have put it down somewhere, wandered off to do something else, come back to, where did I put that? <laughs> where, did we see, where did you see my rock? I do it all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, that hammer, oh, I'll just go on the beach, mate, and get another one, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how these things get lost. We lose things all the time. And that's probably what happened here. I see. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, What's confusing me now, though, is uh, when we looked at the pot, we were talking about the manufacturing process exactly. and how this was an artefact, yeah. a Roman artefact. It was man-made. This, where does this fall into that discussion? Because this is natural, mm. but it's been used. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how, as an archaeologist, do you sort of define the barrier as such. Is there a barrier? Well, that, that is a very interesting point, And that's one of the reasons I brought, another reason I brought these two items. Because artifacts, yes, as I say, most of the time we think of them being made, but actually something becomes an artifact when it's been modified or utilized by humans in some way. And that's exactly what's happened with this. They yeah. just happen to have used something that's naturally available to them. You know, why bother to go to the, pro to the to the bother of, of making a hammer when you've got a perfectly good naturally available material that will do it for you just as well yes, without too much exactly. messing about so that then becomes an artifact the fact it's naturally occurring is, is, is one thing um, but it, it has been changed it's been yes. modified now sometimes you get Com what look like completely natural things that don't show any sign of modification and what you would do then was you try and think well is this natural is this material naturally occurring in this vicinity i.e is it something that, some that could have got in here accidentally or has somebody deliberately brought it here yeah. i mean my house is full of rocks and shells Yes, um, I, I mean, Orkney, <laughs> Orkney and Shetland, where I work, has got some fantastic geology and the stones that you get, particularly on the beaches where they have been water run, are fantastic. And I pick them up. I don't do anything with them. I pick them up. I bring them home and they become ornaments in my house. Yeah. Now, I haven't modified them, but, but they have I have utilised them. Yes. Yeah. So in a way, even sometimes completely unmodified natural materials can become finds or artifacts of significance just because they're out of position they're yeah. not where you would expect to find them a person has moved it or used it or looked at it exactly. and kept it yeah exactly yeah, that makes sense but just to show another way i have got a third thing but this this okay. isn't this isn't found but this Go just demonstrates about the use of natural materials 
We had a, a dinner up in Orkney one year. We were invited round to dinner by some of our friends and they'd made little name plates for us all. Okay. And that was mine. Jackie. Oh, that simply fun. is a piece of rock with my name written on it. That's a good example though, that's a really good example of how things are just moved and used yeah. by humans and it becomes... It becomes an artifact. Yeah. That's brilliant. So there you are. Thank you very much. My claim much. to fame. My only claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jackie. That was really interesting. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Jackie's object, please follow the link in the description. You can also follow us on our other social media channels and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>